Good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> Hope everyone's doing well out there. Another um, another full week here, coming to an end here on Friday afternoon. I uh, want to provide uh, a few updates. Before I get there, I just want to continue to reiterate how appreciative I am personally and professionally and, and our staff to, with all that's going on out there in the world to know that um, we continue to do as much as we can to lead with our hearts and to make Livonia Bulldog Strong mean something and matter to so many people. Um, thank you very much for all you're doing out there. Again, there's a lot of, a lot of questions and concerns um, throughout our world on a lot of fronts and just greatly appreciative of the loving, um, supportive way that we come together as a community and help one another. Um, just tremendous and really appreciate it. We certainly saw that last night. If you had the opportunity to come down um, to go through our last day Livonia Parade, thank you to all the staff for coming and uh, Mr. Whittle and Mr. D'Imperio, Mr. Gammon, everybody for putting things together with their staffs. It was just a, a really great way um, to end a very, very different year for sure. I know everybody who came through, um, all of our families, mine included, um, just had a great, great evening. So thank you so much to everyone for participating in um, our last day Livonia. And especially to our retirees, it was really their last day. Um, and so uh, after everybody cleared out, we, we brought our retirees through the same uh, wave goodbye parade and they got the chance to say goodbye. And then, um, and then uh, took them out to dinner um, to, to spend some little bit of time with them um, last night. Lots of retirees that we have to celebrate. Um, social media on our website, you can continue to find um, little blurbs. These, these will also be in the focus that is being worked on and will be mailed out to homes as well. But just appreciative of all of their uh, many, many years of dedicated service, caring for our kids, leading with their hearts, um, showing us what it means to be Livonia strong. Greatly appreciate all that they've given um, to, to make Livonia such a special, special place for all of us. So it was a good way. We had a luncheon yesterday, a virtual luncheon, of course, um, and got a chance to have to say goodbye and to acknowledge them, even albeit remotely. Um, certainly a different way to uh, end their retirement and end their, their time here with us in Livonia, but it was a great celebration. And again, um, please visit online. Please know we'll, uh, we'll have the focus coming out to celebrate them a little bit more as well. Congratulations also to our 2020 uh, career and technical education seniors who participated in a uh, virtual graduation ceremony um, from the May Center. Um, these students um, continue to persevere and move ahead with their coursework. Certainly um, a lot of very unique challenges that they faced um, inherent in career and technical education programming is um, experiential and hands-on and about being in the work of these really important trades and skills that they learn. But uh, this group of kids, a great group of kids, um, congratulations uh, to them. Please uh, visit the YouTube link um, to, uh, to watch their graduation. Congrats also to James and Jordan for being uh, completing all it takes to become an Eagle Scout on June 15th. Um, I think it's very emblematic of the things that make uh, Livonia such a great spot um, to raise children in and to be in our community. Um, the the um, hard work, the community service, the giving, all part of becoming an Eagle Scout. And we really appreciate these two fine young men, uh, James and Jordan. Congrats also to uh, Gina, Kimmy, and Anna as part of the signs of us starting to get back to some reopening. Uh, they were able to have an in-person celebration at the American Legion Post um, and read their um, winning essays of what Memorial Day means to them. So congratulations to these um, fine young ladies. Also wanna say thank you for participating in our first ever all ballot, uh, absentee ballot election um, and vote, budget vote. Um, it was it was a considerable undertaking in a very short time, so we appreciate everybody uh, for participating. Um, we sent out over 8,000 ballots and, and got back uh, just about 2,500. Um, and then ensued in the vote counting and uh, determined those with our great partners. Really appreciate all the support from Livingston County Board of Elections um, through the election officials, the machines, the ballots. Um, really couldn't have done it without our partners at Livingston County, so thank you to them. 
Uh, if you haven't heard yet, our budget did pass. Uh, Proposition one passed. Proposition two, which is uh, purchasing um, transportation vehicles, that also passed. And as part of it was the Board of Elections, Board of Education Elections. The top three vote totals um, um, are elected to new terms starting uh, in July. And so that is uh, Mrs. Amy Stahl, Mrs. Stephanie Feehan, and Mrs. Karen Bennett. They will all be taking office um, in July. And uh, we want to appreciate Mr. Mayo, Mr. Andy Mayo, who um, will conclude his term at our meeting uh, on Monday. Um, at the end of this June, he'll be done with many, many years of dedicated, um, competent, and important service to our students, our staff, um, and our school community. So appreciate Mr. Mayo for all he's given to our board and our community. Also want to take the opportunity to um, thank a retiring board member. Um, Mr. Rick Wilkins uh, had chose not to run for re-election, and so he also will uh, end his term at our next meeting on Monday. And uh, again, uh, many, many years of dedicated, um, thoughtful uh, service to our students, to our staff, um, and to our entire school community. Uh, can't thank Mr. Wilkins enough and appreciate uh, his years of service uh, to the Board of Education. A few nuts and bolts, middle high school yearbook pickup up is starting next week. Um, so I know Mr. D'Imperio's sent out messages for the morning announcements, just wanna reinforce those. Again, um, middle high school can pick up your yearbook starting next week. Elementary school, you also, um, yearbooks are gonna be able to be picked up the same way through the grab and go, but we're still waiting on them being delivered. So you'll get more information as uh, we, when we receive those, and we'll be distributing it throughout the summer through the grab and go, and more information will be forthcoming. Please pick up your locker contents. We've uh, moved through a number of, of weeks of um, emptying lockers and putting them in bags and boxes and labeling them. Um, they can be picked up through the grab and go process, um, Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, um, 10.30 to uh, 12.30 at the middle high school. Class of 2020, much like our retirees had to retire under a very different um, set of circumstances, you're graduating under um, circumstances that none of us have ever thought or could even imagine would happen. On Monday, you've already got this, but we're gonna be bringing you together, right, to pick up your yearbooks. Um, we've also uh, coordinated some outdoor dining within the public health guidelines. Um, and so there'll be some, um, some dining there on Monday for you and please wear your mask and the social distancing and there'll be directions when you get there. Friday is fun night. We will be doing something with fun night. I appreciate all the parents on the committee every year. It's an amazing um, amount of work and dedication from our senior parents uh, to put on such a special day. This year, certainly additional challenges and it'll come right down to the wire where we're seeking to get approvals, um, seeking to figure out how best to uh, put on a great event and we're still working on it, but I can say that there will be a senior fun night on June 26th. Um, and Saturday, graduation, we will have graduation on the 27th. So what about graduation? Well, not too long ago I shared, uh, we got some new um, executive order that allows us to have 150 people within one gathering for graduation starting June 26th. And so um, we've been making some plans uh, we, we did some walkthroughs today, uh, we're measuring, um, we're organizing, doing logistics to make sure uh, that public health guidelines are um, going to be able to be followed. I'll be submitting some final plans um, on Monday and we'll be communicating once we get approval of those uh, or as much of those as we can on Monday or Tuesday next week uh, to give you all the details. But again, we will be doing a graduation ceremony on June 27th. Please make sure you save the date there. Please know that we will be doing, um, we'll be doing um, something that gets us towards our three priorities. Those three priorities were, were um, developed through feedback through our thought exchange a, a while ago, through different conversations, um, emails, correspondence um, along the way. And those three priorities are, one is if you can, please bring the class together um, as students at least for one last time, because that is a big part of graduation, right? The last time that this group of of young, wonderful bulldogs um, can get together all in a single place um, before they move forward with their life and often will take them in a lot of different paths and a lot of different directions. 
So if we can get the kids together, please make sure we do that. I think our plan is going to be able to do that. Again, we're finalizing that, getting the, getting the last approvals, hopefully on Monday, and being able to share that uh, early next week. The second priority is ensure that parents um, and family members are able to be part of the um, part of the ceremony, especially part of the ceremony where the actual degree, um, the diploma, gets conferred to our um, students. And so we have a plan um, under physical distancing and other public health um, requirements. We have a plan that we think is going to work, and so we'll be able to do that too. And our third priority, um, which was really clear, it was clear last year too when we, were, when we had to make some modifications with graduation, is keep it here. Keep it in our place, our campus, our buildings. Our, our, this is such a special place for so many of us. We spend so, much, so many hours here. It's so beautiful. Uh, it means so much to us. Um, it's the hub of a lot of our life um, right here on campus. So keep graduation ceremony on campus. So again, we're gonna be working on that and I think we're gonna be able to do that. Those three big priorities of the kids can all come together one last time, ensuring that families are part of the diploma um, conferring process and make sure it's here on campus. All three of those big priorities, we've got good plans and uh, we'll be announcing more details to our seniors next week. Kindergarten graduation, uh, the 150 on uh, June 26th certainly really helped this. Before, before loosening that up, we were really struggling about the best way to do this um, for our families. And so more information will be going out, um, but here's just the summary slide. We will be doing kindergarten graduations. It will be on Friday, June 26th. We'll be using similar setups and protocols and processes that we have in place for our full-scale graduation uh, of the seniors on the next day. Um, and so I know Mr. Whittle and the teachers will be communicating more details out um, as we move through next week as well. But we will have kindergarten graduation and it will be um, next Friday, June 26th. Our virtual scholarship ceremony will be Tuesday, June 23rd at 7 p.m. Um, a letter's gone out, we'll have a link. You'll be able to join us in uh, appreciating all the wonderful um, donations from our community and individuals to offer scholarships and the very deserving um, students who are receiving them. So it'll be virtual and it'll be streamed out there um, and uh, we'll have more links coming as we move into next week. Throughout the process I've shared uh, staying connected through our COVID-19 lines 346-4000 extension 1 or sending an email to COVID-19 at LavoniaCSD.org. Please continue to use those. Okay, um, lots of us are going to be working a lot over the summer. Um, it's, uh, I know it was the official end day, last day of Livonia we celebrated uh, last evening, which was great, and that was for our 10-month employees. Um, but please know there is a, um, a staff of 12-month employees that uh, will be working very hard to clean our buildings um, like we do every summer, but then in addition to prepare for reopening um, in the fall and, and a lot of us doing a lot of planning about what is that going to look like and more to come in just a little bit. But for the summer, we're gonna be moving to summer hours starting Monday, June 22nd. That will be Monday through Thursday. And somebody will be answering the phones and responding to your needs from 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. Still please know that there is no just show up um, and knock on the door at this point in time. We still um, have limitations um, to public access. Um, but we'll communicate those as those change. So right now, call ahead if you need to appointment or need to come in. Call ahead, but somebody will be here Monday through Thursday, 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. Summer Grab and Go will continue. We'll continue supporting food stability that's so important to so many. Uh, hundreds of meals go out each and every day. This is going to continue. It's going to shift a little bit starting on Monday, June 22nd. That shift will be Monday, Tuesday, and Thursdays. It'll be Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays throughout the summer from 10.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Foodlink, again, great partners at the county, great partners with Foodlink. Uh, we're going to be hosting on June 24th. That's Wednesday, June 24th. We'll be hosting a Foodlink summer distribution. So please make sure you share that with folks who may need it. Um, that's um, for anybody in the community, not just students and um, families, but anybody in the community can come down on Wednesday, June 24th from 2 to 4 
can go through our grab and go process um, at the middle high school and more information will be shared next week heading into that event as well. Chromebooks, there's been questions about Chromebooks. We're gonna keep them in the hands of our pre-K through 11th grade students. So all students who are gonna be returning to us in the fall, keep those Chromebooks. You can use them however you'd like over the summer. Please know that they still will be monitored through our technology um, safety nets. Um, and so, uh, but we, but we, you're gonna need them and uh, we'll figure out um, exactly what for as we get closer, but just keep those home. You get your Chromebooks all summer. Uh, seniors, please return yours through the grab and go and through the different events that we have uh, moving. But everybody but seniors, um, just keep them in your hands and use them for whatever um, learning purposes you might want to over the summer. We do have a community store open. Uh, get your Bulldog gear if you're interested. It closes next Friday, June 26. Lots of good items out there. If you're interested, again, there's a website and more information uh, through our social media. So what does it really take to reopen? And a lot more is coming from the state very often, right? Um, fortunately, today was the last day the governor is going to do his daily um, press conferences. But I got to say, a lot of headlines come from our governor. A lot of headlines come from that. It makes sense that some people think that I, as a superintendent or other leaders in our community, might get a heads up of what's going to be there. You know, maybe like that morning, maybe get an email blast to say, hey, just a heads up, because we're all partners in this. Um, here's the things that the governor is going to talk about later uh, in the afternoon. None of that happens. In fact, I often find out um, either right when you are, when you're watching this, or um, shortly thereafter, I find out what was going on in the press conference. The problem is headlines aren't substantive, and headlines work in a press conference and for a governor but they don't work for school districts. We need guidelines. We need um, the Department of Health, New York State Department of Health needs to issue guidelines. Those guidelines are pretty prescriptive and need to be pretty prescriptive. Um, the Department of Health um, is, the, is the organization that ensures that we have a certificate of occupancy, um, that we can have um, you know, staff and community and people on campus, and so we have to follow those guidelines. New York State Department of Ed clearly is an organization right at the state level that has a lot of jurisdiction over um, what we do, and we have to follow those guidelines. Um, and of course, the CDC sets the table very often with a lot of the public health guidelines. So we have, to, we have to follow those guidelines. And very often when these headlines come out, guidelines are not there, and it takes two, three, sometimes four days or even a week um, until they come out. And it's not until the guidelines come out that we can really get to our step here as a school district. And our step is reality. How do you take all those guidelines and make plans and policy and procedures? Procurement, like how do we make sure that we have um, PPE? How do we make sure that we have cleaning supplies? How do we make sure that we have things? Process, like what, what are all the moving parts? And then um, people, right? So. There's a lot of um, P's inside of reality that are not embedded in the headlines. So I totally get, you see a headline, newspapers start running it, um, and there's a lot of questions about what are we doing with whatever that happens to be. Please be patient. Please know that like last week, right, a number of headlines came out, playgrounds being open, youth sports, pools, extended school year uh, summer programs, graduation, summer camps, a lot of stuff is always rolling around. Those are great, and headlines. What we need to do is wait for guidelines. And it's not just guidelines from any, any place. We, these three places that I'm sharing with you are the ones that we will build our plans and our reopening plans around. The Department of Health, the New York State Education Department, and the CDC. Those are our three main sources that we need to make sure we're following and adhering to as we move forward. And then we develop plans, policy procedures, procurement, process, and people. So. One more example of that. So, right, the governor came out um, last week there, or earlier this week, it seems like last week was earlier this week, and said youth sports can start on July 6th. Oh, wait, but these youth sports, well, that's about the level of substance um, that came out in those headlines. We don't have any guidelines from New York State Department of Health now. We don't have any guidelines from New York State uh, Department of Education either. We just have the CDC. So if you look at the CDC, one of the things that we know that they're recommending is that it's a phased in approach for youth sports. So even though the headline said youth sports can start July 6th, 
there's no guarantee that all parts of a youth sports um, activity could start on July 6th. And so we're working through that. We're figuring that out. We're asking for more, for more guidance. Um, we advocate for those. We try to get those because, again, we have to do reality. Well, what does that mean? What does that mean for our facility use policy? What does that mean for our partners um, with Town Rec? What does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? And a lot of questions come through that. So not trying to make excuses of why it takes time, not trying to um, you know, kick the can down the road, just trying to be really honest. This is an explanation. There's a lot between a headline that comes out. You need guidelines and we need them in black and white in order to operate. And then we um, put those into all of our plans and our policies and our procedures and organize our people around process and make sure that we have purchased um, the right things for, um, for them to be safe and for you to be safe when you come back to campus. So bear with us, it's not about uh, perfection, it is about persistence as I've been saying through this whole process. We will get there and we'll continue to communicate with you just because we're saying we're out for summer. Please know there's a bunch of people still here every single day um, working really hard to figure out what will it take to reopen. And we will continue to do it uh, in a way that's safe, in a way that our goal is to bring us back as soon as we possibly can. The New York State Department of Education has a Re reopening schools regional task force. I was invited to participate in our region's task force um, that happened this past Monday. It's a three hour meeting um, where we uh, learned where we shared our perspective, where we tried to problem solve things and give the state um, board of regents uh, some things to think about from that reality perspective. They're planning on having their guidance about reopening schools out on July 13th. So this board meeting down here that they're having, the board of regents on July 13th. So it's still gonna take some weeks. What's the headline say? Well, the governor said there was a headline that said, school districts are gonna have their plans ready on July 15th. Let me just take you back that one slide there. So the Board of Regents, the New York State Education Department, which is probably our most, um, most uh, the organization has the most jurisdiction over what we do as schools, said so they're going through a process and they're not gonna have guidelines to us until July 13th. The governor's headline earlier this week was, no, schools are gonna have their plans July 15th. So we'll have two days to turn those around, no. Something's going to have to give here and something's going to have to um, be figured out. And I know it will. Um, there's a lot of politics in our state. Um, they're working through that. What I know is we will figure out and we'll figure out what's best for us here in Livonia and we'll do it the right way. We'll do it by putting people first, just like we did when we closed in March. We'll make sure that Maslow's hierarchy of needs are met. We'll do everything we can to ensure that we're supporting our students and partnering with our families, keeping our staff safe, and making sure that we keep running and putting people first as our community. There's some variations that I've shared before of what reopening could look like. I think we've got some good information coming out. Dr. Mendoza, who is the Monroe County Department of Health um, leader, has said recently, as, as, as recent as this week, that in his mind and looking at the data, if it continues on the path that is headed, that he has a hard time reimagining um, or imagining a time when schools would have to be completely shut down for a long period, like we have been. So that's good news. Um, and that we're gonna likely be able to open up in some version in September. That's good news. So there's no guarantees in this, but that's good news. And that's what we're planning on. And that's what we're planning for. Our goal is to have 100% face-to-face instruction in September. The plans we're gonna put forth, the energies that we're gonna put forth is to do our very, very best within what we're permitted to under public health and New York State Ed guidelines, have everybody back face-to-face -face in September. That's what we're working for, that's what we're doing. We do think that in, within our plans, we're gonna to have to also figure out some options of what a hybrid learning situation might look like. Perhaps that is offering some virtual learning to some students and families who have certain medical needs or certain concerns about wherever we're gonna be in September to make sure that they can still move forward with their learning. 
we certainly hope that the guidelines are going to change. If I had to make school opening plans right now, they'd be much different than what I hope they're going to be. For example, there isn't a hard and fast yet. We're still waiting for guidance from New York State Ed, but the CDC guidelines really start putting forth um, having very few students on a bus, as low as 10 has been suggested. So on a 67 passenger bus, as low as 10 has been suggested. That's just not workable. That's just not tenable. We'd be shipping kids back and forth across our 108 square miles all day long. There'd be no learning, there'd just be busing. We don't have enough buses. Even if we were able to purchase enough buses for 10 per bus, we don't have enough bus drivers. There's a shortage of bus drivers. I don't share any of this to, to dampen, um, you know, to dampen our, our planning or minimize the, our fact that our goal is 100% face-to-face. What I am sharing is there's still a lot of questions out there. We still need a lot more of those guidelines. We need those guidelines to be realistic and we'll continue to work um, throughout the summer to rebuild um, a plan to make sure that we open. The third category there is short-term sporadic closures. And so I think this is a realistic possibility that sometime during the year, we may be faced with a challenge that would be similar to like an extended snow, um, snow event where there could be two, three, maybe four days where we would need to be closed for um, more significant deep cleaning, some sort of precautionary kind of closure. Um, and so I'm just sharing with you a number of things here. One, our goal is to be face-to-face 100% come September. That's what we're working for, that's what we're gonna do. Two, we will have options in contingency plans made. Three, I hope that you have some contingency plans thought out for some of those sporadic short-term closures. What would you do if we needed to close for a few days? What would you need to do if we needed to close for a week? Um, And so the more you can think about those things, I think the better off you'll be prepared. The more information I'm getting as the metrics and the trajectory continue to be solid here in New York, I don't think right now that 100% remote learning is gonna happen and uh, for a significant period of time. Now this all could change and it's all dependent on how we um, adhere to the public health recommendations and how our community responds and how healthy our community is. So stay healthy. The best thing you can do for us to reopen is to stay healthy and to have our metrics work. The more we can do to that, the more confident I am that we'll have 100% face-to-face come September. We'll make sure we integrate the CDC um, areas. There's seven characteristics of a situation that they have us look at. That's movement, duration, proximity, group size, a respiratory output. Um, so we have to, we're gonna have to make some modifications with PE. So we are gonna, you know, our goal is to be open face to face, but when you look at these seven characteristics um, and then plan the reality that comes underneath those, we will probably be pretty different in how we come back 100% face to face. And so we have all summer to plan that. We will be planning that. We will also be communicating that out um, and getting you involved to give us some feedback as those plans go on. As we shared throughout this very different time, please know that I know, our staff knows, and I hope that you know, we are all doing the best we can. We're all doing the best we can. There's all so many challenges out there on so many different fronts right now. What I hope is like these sunflowers when the, when the um, sky is gray, that they help and they turn towards each other, not away from each other, that we turn towards each other and support each other through this. Again, a whole number of things happening in our world, a lot of anxieties and worries out there on a whole number of things. What I know what it means to be Livonia Bulldog Strong is that we come together, we stay focused, We stay together and we keep moving things forward and we ensure that people are first all the time. Proud that we've done that and I know that we're gonna continue to do that. It is what makes a difference. It is what helps all of us be better and do better as we keep moving forward. I also know our staff, I think if you came to campus last night, you saw it. Our staff is passionate, dedicated, committed to ensure that no matter what school looks like in the fall. What we know will be in any plans that we have, 
is that all of our students, all of our students are safe, are loved, and are educated. All of them, no matter where they come from, in our district, which families they come from, what, what backgrounds they come from, we love all of our kids. We ensure that they have the opportunities and the support to be successful. And we'll do anything we can to make sure everyone's included and supported and provided the opportunities to move forward because that's what Livonia is about. And um, I just can't appreciate all of us more as a community for what we, who we are and what we do each and every day. Again, can't hide my bulldog pride. If you, if you got the chance to drive through campus last night, maybe you saw me in my, my orange and my orange paw print pants. Um, but those are special day pants. They're not everyday pants. They're special day pants. Um, can't hide my bulldog pride. We've had such um, a trying and challenging last three months across our country and certainly in our community. And we've done an amazing job of supporting one another, staying true to one another, putting people first and knowing that learning will come as we take care of one another. So thank you very much. It's a very different end to a school year. I will be continuing to give updates throughout the summer. Again, a whole staff is gonna be working here all summer trying to figure out what reopening looks like. Um, but what we need from you at home is to stay healthy and be well. Stay healthy and be well is the best thing you can do for us in the coming weeks. Thank you and, and we'll talk soon.